Hello whiskey lovers, Ari the Whiskey Guy here in Seattle. Luckily it's home for me, don't have too far to travel. We are going to the Westland Distillery today. We're gonna to meet with Matt Hoffman, the co-founder and head distiller. Dreary day out, but it's time to go taste some whiskey. Let's go do it, let's go see Westland. One of the questions I get all the time when it comes to distilleries is about new American distilleries. It's no secret that they have a big challenge trying to get a return on the investment for the people that have invested so much. Well, the Westland Distillery here in Seattle, Washington really has a leg up on a lot of the other people. They've got a lot of product, got a lot of whiskey that's laid down maturing. They're making a hell of a single malt whiskey right here in the United States. And yes, we are here at the Westland Distillery in Seattle, Washington. Let's go inside and say hi to Matt. Welcome to Westland Distillery. My name is Matt Hoffman and I am the master distiller here. So we are a producer of American single malt whiskey. So we make nothing but single malt whiskey here. Um, started in 2010 here in Seattle, Washington. And now we're making about a thousand barrels of whiskey a year here, which makes us one of the largest uh, malt whiskey distilleries in the Western Hemisphere. Um, so we use 100% malted barley here. So these are our malts here. Um, these are the five uh, core malts that we use, it's really what got us into the business is the flavor of malted barley. Um, so we have three core recipes that we use here. One is the five malt recipe, which uses all five of these malted barleys that are here on the table. Uh, the second one is just uh, pale malt, so very traditional, kind of like mainland Scotland. The third is 100% peated malt, and that comes over from Scotland, although we are now going to use some uh, Washington State peated malt. So these malts down here, we start with a base of pale malt. So the pale malt, what, what we have here is, it's kind of classic light, biscuity, dry flavor. Uh, it forms the, the base for all the other flavors to build on top of. We've got a Munich malt as well. So this is a style of malt that comes from Munich, Germany, um, but is also made from Washington State barley as the pale malt is. We have something called extra special malt, which adds some really nice kind of cedar notes, marshmallow, prunes. Then we have a brown malt and a pale chocolate malt that come over from the UK. The brown malt is nutty, the pale chocolate malt is chocolate, coffee, leather, and tobacco. So we combine all five of these together to get a huge spectrum of malted barley flavor. And this is, what's interesting about this is that this doesn't happen at all in Scotland. You know, for 700 years, it's, they've just really never used these malts. They're always used for darker beers like porters and stouts. And I think part of what makes us who we are is the fact that we have a large brewing influence here in Seattle and so we look at what brewers can do and say why can't we do the same thing it's still malted barley uh, so why can't we dive into it the same way the brewers can uh, so we do it and that's one of the things that separates not just us uh, from the other distilleries in Scotland but also American single malt whiskey as a whole um, that's that's what makes us unique so we'll produce it Various times throughout the year, we'll cycle the recipes in and out, the five malt recipe, the pale malt recipe, and the peated malt recipe. That malt is gonna go through a roller mill, um, and it's gonna end up being cracked. So using the four roller mill, we're gonna crack the grain to preserve the husk. I mean, very traditional, just like you'd see in Scotland. And then it gets put over here into the mash room, and this is where we process the grain. This is where we're doing our mash. So very traditional style here in terms of mashing. Um, grist case of so the loaded grain up there gets mixed in with water through a steel smasher in that tube there. Drop down to the mash tun, that's what's happening right now. The grain is with the water in the mash tun. Um, we're doing a, a, a mix in here to get the enzymes in the grain to do its conversion process. We're holding in there at 64C for maximum starch conversion. Then after about 30 minutes, we'll begin to lauder. We'll stop the rakes right now. They're moving everything around, keeping everything mixed up. We'll draw out the liquid, the wort, water, sugar, flavor, color. It's gonna be drawn out over the course of about two hours. And we'll collect about 5,000 liters of wort, 1,320 gallons uh, per batch. We do two batches per day uh, to fill one 10,000 liter fermentation vessel per day. Um, right now we'll operate four days a week, but we can easily ramp up to seven days a week if we want to. Um, 
and we could go to 24-7 that would allow us to produce about 4,500 barrels of whiskey a year here. So we definitely have room to grow uh, in this facility, um, and that's a good thing. <laughs> For people who are more familiar with bourbon, this is a totally different production process. Um, you know, we could not make bourbon here, we could not make rye whiskey here, we could not make wheat whiskey here. This is a dedicated malt whiskey distillery. So these are our fermentation vessels here. Uh, each one has the capacity for 10,000 liters, uh, which is 2,640 gallons. Into the fermentation vessel with the wort that we produce each day, we're gonna add our yeast strain. And our yeast strain is a, not a typical one for, uh, for distillers. Um, we use a, a French Saison brewing yeast. Uh, this is, using brewing yeast is, is really rare to begin with. I mean, nobody does it in Scotland anymore by itself like we do. Um, but to use a Saison yeast is, I, don't, I think we're probably the only ones who do that. Um, distiller's yeast is fine, it ferments things very quickly, it's very neutral, but you know, there's, there's actually a lot, of, a lot more history with brewing yeast than there is with distiller's yeast. And so it's kind of funny, people think that we're, we're innovating or doing something radical, but really all, all that we're doing is, is going back to a more traditional technique. So, um, and it's the same thing with the malts. You know, with the malts, we had all these roasted malts that they give us all this incredible flavor that brewers use typically. And we said, same thing with the yeast. Why do brewers get to have all the fun with all those different yeast strains? Um, so we just, we just do it. There's no reason why we can't. And that's part of what makes up Westland and what we do. It's not just the raw ingredients. I mean, we have the same four raw ingredients that you have in Scotland, malted barley, yeast, water, and the casks. But it's also, culture that, that permeates the products. I mean, that's part of the way that we think about things in the Pacific Northwest is, and in the United States in general, is we just don't have that, we don't have that 700 years of history weighing down on us, telling us to make things a certain way. So we can just do what we want, which is, which is a really exciting thing. And there's a lot of people in Scotland that wish they had the ability to do that, which is pretty cool, we're pretty lucky. So, um, so anyways, we're going to ferment away. We have a long fermentation process for a whiskey distillery. It's about five days for the fermentation process. It's going to be 8% alcohol by volume when it's done. Be ready for distillation. We have two stills here. They're built by Vendome Copper and Brass, based out of Louisville, Kentucky. That's why they look different from the, you know, the typical Scottish stills, uh, which are made by Forsyth. And we wanted to go with an American company to build our stills. So we have a, a wash still and a spirit still. Very classic um, double distillation process. On the surface, we do one minor tweak that makes us a little bit more like um, Morlock or Springbank uh, in terms of the way that we distill. So the wash still is 7,500 liters. We're gonna fill that to about 5,000 liters, so to two thirds capacity. And what we're gonna do is take half of each fermentation, put that in the wash still and distill it. Um, we actually make a cut in our wash run, which is pretty rare um, in the world of, of whiskey. It's actually something that we picked up from, um, from reading cognac textbooks, but that's where I say it's, it's more similar to Mortlock um, or Springbank, is, is that we have these slight hitches um, in our production process that make it a little bit different, but it makes a world of difference. Um, so we do that, we, we actually cut the first 80% of the liquid, we call that low wines, and that goes to the low wines receiver. The last 20% of the liquid that comes out of the wash still, that we call faints. So we have these two liquids, the low wines and the faints, and we're gonna recycle back the tails from the previous spirit distillation into the low wines. So these three liquids together are about 35% alcohol by volume. Uh, then we're gonna add some water to that to bring that down to 27.5% uh, alcohol by volume. And this is to promote separation of some kind of undesirable flavor compounds uh, long chain fatty acids and the like. And we do that and it's rested overnight before it goes back into the spirit still. So the low wines into the spirit still, the spirit still runs basically the same as a traditional um, Scottish spirit run. There is, all the cuts that we do are done by nose only. Um, we know roughly what proof it's gonna be, we know roughly what time it's gonna be, but the eventual decision is down to the nose of, of the distiller. And one of the reasons why we do that, for example, is, is because we use that Belgian yeast, the yeast is creating a ton of flavor compounds, lots of fruits, um, citrus notes, red berry notes, some spice as well. But it also produces a little bit more ethyl acetate, which is the kind of nail polish removery smell. So we have to wait a little bit longer in our heads cut 
um, and we have to make that judgment ultimately based on our nose. So we do that. Uh, we have a pretty wide range in our um, hearts fraction. So moving heads to hearts, again, done by nose, but it's around 150 proof typically. Um, and then that'll drop down to 130 proof for our hearts to tails transition. Uh, that 150 to 130, that really wide spectrum gives us a ton of interesting flavors. I mean, there's no point in using all the flavorful raw ingredients if you distill to such a narrow cut point. Um, so we get this wide hearts cut that'll give us a ton of flavor. Again, the tails cut is also done by nose only. Um, and we have the tails fraction. So the heads, the hearts, the tails. Um, the tails get recycled back. The heads get recycled back with the faints from the wash run. And uh, those get redistilled once a week. Senior distillery talk. <laughs> so yeah, each day we're producing about five barrels of, of whiskey you know, a day. Right now we're producing four days a week. So we produce about 20 barrels of whiskey a week, roughly, so. Um, this, is, this is our spirit safe. It's built by Vendome, so, you know, we, we told them what a spirit safe was, but because they don't traditionally build these, you know, it ends up manifesting itself a little bit different than the traditional Scottish spirit safes where liquid does pour into a bowl. You know, this is bubbling up because that's just the design they came up with. I mean, this is our take on the very cool tradition, I think, of, of having a spirit safe, but with a quintessentially American twist to it. And it looks, you know, it looks beautiful. All right, so the casks. So, um, being a malt whiskey distillery, we have a couple of things that are, that are traditional, um, like first fill ex-bourbon casks and sherry casks. Um, but we also have some things that are quintessentially American, and that's the use of virgin uh, American oak. So what makes, the, um, what makes Westland unique is that we're 100% air dried staves here for our new oak. This is really rare. I think that we might be the only distillery, big or small, in the United States that uses all air dried oak. And the, the effects of air drying, it's just, I mean, it, it's, it's night and day, it truly is. Um, so we looked at, originally it was wine textbooks um, to read about oak, because there's really not a lot of resources out there about quality of oak in the whiskey industry. And if you ask any winemaker whether they're using air dried oak or kiln dried oak, they'd go, of course we're using air dried oak. What are, you, are you nuts? Like, kiln dried oak is for furniture. And so we said, all right, let's use air dried oak. And the results, you know, were just incredible. Just the softening of the whole experience. You know, there's no bitterness. Um, it's just fantastic stuff. So we get most of our wood, uh, it's all slow growth oak. Um, this is obviously with its head popped off and with the plexiglass head in its place. Um, but the, the oak is typically coming from colder climates, uh, Pennsylvania or Minnesota. Um, with that, you have slower growth, which means more uh, rings per inch. That actually makes it less dense. And that's actually a good thing for us. We get more oxidation um, coming in, and that's what we're looking for. Um, a lot of other distilleries are looking for extraction, 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 just like want a ton of the caramel and vanilla that comes out of oak. Um, and I think that that's, that's, you know, that's not what we want to do here. Uh, we want to get a softening of the original flavor. We don't want the whiskey to be all about the cask. Um, it certainly doesn't have to be, um, you know, we want the malt flavor, all that flavor that we spent so much time putting into the whiskey to begin with, if you put it in a, a cask that's too small or, or, or whatever, you'll end up destroying the whiskey in our opinion. So uh, we're full-size casks, full-size 53 gallon casks or larger actually. Um, we have some 60 gallon hogsheads or 65 gallon hogsheads um, and then 150 gallon uh, butts or punchins as well. Um, so with a new American oak, we have two different chars. We have a number three on the one to four scale, a number three, which gives us a little bit more extraction. We also have a heavy toast light char, which gives us a more delicate extraction that we can kind of prolong over time. Uh, so we have those, we have casks that come over. This is uh, an ex, I think, Buffalo Trace cask. Uh, but increasingly, we're, we're trying to use more and more of our own casks because uh, just the, the quality of the wood is, is just so good. Um, and, you know, it's also getting harder to find these casks with the whiskey industry just 
being what it is. Um, so we have these casks. Um, we have these sherry casks here as well, which are just extraordinary. Uh, we get these from a, a company called Tonaleria del Sur in Montilla, Spain. Uh, we get a probably about equal mix of, of Pedro Jimenez sherry butts um, or hogsheads and Oloroso butts and hogsheads. Uh, typically, they're really old. Like this, you know, this cask is 70-ish years old, I would say. And it's got, you know, they're shipped whole. Um, so it's basically, you know, it's a fresh dump cask, essentially. So we get a lot of intensity from that sherry character in the first fill. Um, and then the second fill with something like this, this is where when people ask us, you know, what's your guys' plan for the really long term? You know, you guys laying stuff down for a long time, and, and yeah, we are. Um, but it just depends on what kind of barrel we put it in. So a cask like this, you know, on its second fill, after we filled it once, that's the type of whiskey that would go down for 20 to 30 years minimum. And, you know, we're trying to put down about 25 to 30 percent of our, our whiskey um, to, to be kind of long-term, extra long-term aging. Um, so we are looking at long projects like that, but it all depends on the barrel that we put it in. So we have the hogsheads, uh, we have the butts, we do sherry finishing, and we also do uh, full-term sherry cask maturation from the very beginning. Um, and then the last big thing that we do here, we do have a couple other side projects, actually right below here, we have some red wine casks, um, we, have some, we have some port casks, we have some Madeira, we have some Sauternes, and all that stuff is fun. Uh, but the other thing that makes us, I think, really unique and really has a sense of place here um, is, is Oregon oak. And this is uh, an oak species that only grows in the Pacific Northwest, uh, starting southern British Columbia down through Puget Sound and into the Willamette Valley of Oregon. Uh, it's just, the flavor profile is extraordinary. I mean, it's, if American oak is caramel, vanilla, coconut, baking spices, Oregon oak or Quercus gariana, as it's called, is molasses and, and brown sugar and clove, heavy clove. It's smoky, blackberry jam, coffee grounds, just so dark. It's just delicious. Um, so we're now filling quite a bit of this stuff. We're actually going so far as to actually secure the green logs that come down. All the stuff comes down in windstorms uh, and we'll pick it up and secure those for a minimum air drying period of three years. So this is kind of the lengths that we have to go to to get the highest quality wood, but it, I mean, it, make, it makes such a difference. Um, and you have, to, you have to think long term like that uh, for a business like this. So this is less than 5% of all of our maturing whiskeys here, here in Seattle. We actually just moved uh, all of these up here. Uh, these casks were filled mostly in 2015, 2016. They will spend their next two or three years here. Um, and this is, of course, room temperature in here. Um, we do some events and some other fun things in here. But most of our maturing whiskey is down in Hoquiam, Washington, which is out um, around the Olympic Peninsula and out on the coast. So everybody thinks it rains a lot in Seattle. Um, the great secret, which I'm gonna bl blow right now, is, is that it doesn't. Um, you know, we get about 35 inches of rain a year here. Um, it's gray and it's cloudy all the time. Um, but we get a ton of rain. The reason why we actually get less rain than most cities on the East Coast is that there's a big mountain range called the Olympics to our west that's stopping most of the moisture coming off the Pacific. And out there we have temperate rainforests. The only place in the United States where we have real temperate rainforests. And out there, there's about 150 inches of rain that falls out there. So it's constantly wet. It's constantly the same temperature. I mean, it's 50 degrees almost always year round. Um, and that's perfect for the style of whiskey that we're trying to make, which again, we're not trying to over extract from the wood. We don't want to use, you know, the smaller barrels that extract too much flavor. You know, we want to taste the spirit itself. And that's, that's like the really important thing for us. That's what I think makes us different, not just from other American distilleries, but also from our Scottish friends as well. So we want to taste the spirit. Um, so out there, because we don't have the warm summers pushing whiskey into the wood and uh, the cold winters contracting it back out, we have a very, very temperate, you know, more oxidation-based uh, maturation out there. So we develop the flavors of the spirit more uh, than we extract. Uh, and that, to us, is the perfect style of whiskey. I mean, for bourbon, you might want something else entirely, but we're not trying to make bourbon here. We're trying to make uh, single malt whiskey. And that's, ultimately, that's why we make single malt whiskey here. We love making single malt whiskey, but it's our belief that, that really distilling is, is an agricultural enterprise, and it should be connected to the land that it comes from. 
And this is one of the best barley growing states in the country. It is the best barley growing state in the country. Um, I mean, the climate, especially in Western Washington, very, very similar um, to Scotland and England. We have beautiful water here, which every distiller says, um, but we really do have beautiful water here. And then the perfect temperate aging environment for the style of whiskey we want to create. So ultimately what we're trying to make is something that is reflective both of the, the culture of the Pacific Northwest, but also of the environment and, and really of the, the terroir um, of, of where we come from. And ultimately that's what makes a whiskey that has a true place in the world. And you know, the whiskey will have a boom period, it's having a boom period, and people will eventually stop buying so many bourbons and, and all this stuff is gonna change. But in the, if you think in the long term, if you think what we're gonna be doing 100 years from now, we're still gonna be doing this here, we think, because this is what we should be doing in this place. And that's what Westland Distillery is all about. All right, thanks very much for, for watching today. Uh, if you have any questions about Westland Distillery and what we do, you can visit our website, westlanddistillery.com, check out our Facebook page, um, or just come down and, and take a tour. Thanks very much. Fresh off a very big win for the Icons of Whiskey, congratulations to Matt Offman and the entire team here at the Westland Distillery in Seattle, Washington. What a great time I had visiting. You know, it's, uh, it's so often that you hear about people that uh, maybe they're just getting into the game for one reason or another, but uh, it seems like Matt and the team here are doing it, doing it right, 100% all the way through. They, uh, they really care about the spirit and the production methods and keeping that ecosystem all centric right around uh, uh, from grain all the way through into the water production process. And then of course finishing up with the wood that they use for their maturation, including some, uh, some local wood products. I'm excited to see what's coming down the line for the Westland Distillery. Again, thank you, Matt Hoffman, the rest of the team here at Westland Distillery. Fellow whiskey lovers, I hope you had a great time with me here at the Westland Distillery, and we'll see you at the next one.